Welcome. This month, we are considering the verse from Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Another translation says this. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. Jesus says that the pure in heart are blessed, for they shall see God. If we believe that God dwells within us, what does it mean that the pure in heart will see God? Surely it means we only have to look within, for that is where God dwells. What does it really mean to see God? And what is purity? The words that Jesus spoke to the crowd on the hillside all those years ago are so familiar to us and yet open up a whole vista of questions and pondering about purity, about seeing and about the condition of our hearts. The invitation this month is to reflect on what purity of heart actually is and what it really means to see God right here and right now. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. For you are great. And you do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, so that I may walk in your truth. Let me worship your name with an undivided heart. I will praise you with all my heart. O Lord, my God, and I will glorify your name forever. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. In the book of Exodus, the word pure is used 29 times, describing how the furnishings of the temple are to be made and the kind of incense to be used, that is from pure gold and pure frankincense. Solomon covered the entire interior of the temple with pure gold. I'm struck by the significance of this use of pure in setting up the temple 
where God was said to dwell. This naturally leads to reflecting on our own inner temple, the dwelling place now of God. The gold and frankincense used in the temple were considered pure when they were completely free of any impurities, any other substances that were not gold or not frankincense respectively. Purity in its most clear and original meaning refers to the idea of something being singular, unified, unmixed or consistent. This was also so with the pure nard Mary anointed Jesus with. No additives, no blemishes, no unwanted extras. And the perfume of this pure nard was extraordinary. I love this concept of purity in the temple furnishings, in the anointing of Jesus. It was the purity of the offering that made it sacred and indicated the degree of devotion, pure devotion. There is a sense that the setting up of the temple in the Old Testament is a preview, a metaphor perhaps, of the New Testament and later version of the dwelling place of God, which is the human soul dedicated to God. This deepens the sense of purity from being something merely behavioural, what we do or don't do, to something far more essential. Our actions, thoughts and attitudes arise from within. If our inner self, our heart, our soul is pure, then everything that flows out of us will also be pure. In fact, this is our very essence. God within us. God alone. Purity to Jesus is far more than an ability to maintain the rituals and requirements of any law. Such behaviour arises from an undivided heart, a heart that desires only one thing, God. The pure in heart are focused from the inside out on one single thing. It's choosing to keep our innermost selves free of any distractions, divisions, anything really, that would contaminate a single-hearted devotion to God. Some of the most significant Old Testament promises that God gave His people during turbulent times reflect this idea of inner unity. Other translations offer this wording. I'll make them of one mind and heart, always honouring me, so that they can live good and whole lives. I will unite them behind a single desire and purpose, to revere and worship me forever. When the scattered pieces of our lives our souls come together as one heart and mind. When we release our woundings, our distractions, our judgments and our fears, we are restored to one beautiful, whole and complete self, undivided, united, consistent, in perfect oneness. And then then we shall truly see God. As we let go of all that causes division within ourselves, we shall see God within us, around us, and in all things. We will see God's glory, grace, and love within all of creation. 
Like so much of our Christian journey, there is some paradox in this. There's some now and not yet. God dwells within us, yet our hearts are not always undivided, not always consistently aligned with God's purposes. It is a process, a process of deepening and widening our focus on and devotion to God. As you reflect on the following verses, what is God saying to you about your own heart and how you can let go of anything causing division or inconsistency within? O Lord, our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, so that desiring you, we may seek and find you, and so finding you may love you, and so loving you may hate everything that separates us from you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. May God our Father himself and our Master Jesus clear the road to you and may the Master pour on the love so it fills your lives and splashes over on everyone around you just as it does from us to you. May you be infused with strength and purity filled with confidence in the presence of God our Father when our Master Jesus arrives with all his followers.